The Wideband Global Satcom System WGS is a high-capacity satellite communications system planned for use in partnership by the United States Department of Defense and the Australian Department of Defense. The system is composed of the space segment satellites, the terminal segment users and the control segment operators. DOD wideband satellite communication services are currently provided by a combination of the existing Defense Satellite Communications System (DSCS) and Global Broadcast Service (GBS) satellites. According to United Launch Alliance, quoted on Spaceflight Now, a single WGS spacecraft has as much bandwidth as the entire existing DSCS constellation." WGS operations are currently run by the 4th Space Operations Squadron, mostly by Sean B. out of Schriever Air Force Base. <laughs> Mission The constellation of WGS satellites increases the communications capabilities of the militaries of the United States, Canada, and Australia by providing additional bandwidth and communications capabilities for tactical command and control, communications, and computers, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance C4ISR, battle management, and combat support information. Canada has also signed on to become a partner. WGS also augments the current car band Global Broadcast Service on UHF-FO satellites by providing additional information broadcast capabilities as well as providing new two-way capability on that band. It provides services to the US DOD and Australian Department of Defense. The IWS system supports continuous 24-hour-per-day wideband satellite services to tactical users and some fixed infrastructure users. Limited protected services will be provided under conditions of stress to selected users employing terrestrial modems capable of providing protection against jamming. <laughs> <laughs> Capabilities. The WGS satellites will complement the DSCS-3 Service Life Enhancement Program and GBS payloads and will offset the eventual decline in DSCS-3 capability. WGS will offer 4.875 GHz of instantaneous switchable bandwidth, thus each WGS can supply more than 10 times the capacity of a DSCS-3 Service Life Enhancement Program satellite. Once the full constellation of six WGS satellites is operational, they will replace the DSCS system. WGS-1 with its 2.4 gigabits per second wideband capacity, provided greater capability and bandwidth than all the DSCS satellites combined. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Segments Operation and usage of the system is broken into three segments. The end users of the communication services provided by the WGS are described by the DOD as the terminal segment. Users include the Australian Defence Force and U.S. Army ground mobile terminals, U.S. Navy ships and submarines, national command authorities for the nuclear forces, and various national security, allied national forces. Additionally, the Air Force Satellite Control Network will also use the WGS in a similar manner as the DSCS-3 constellation is used to route ATM packets through the DISA cloud to establish command and control streams with various satellite constellations. One of the emerging applications is SATCOM on the move which is now being extensively used on the military tactical vehicles for Blue Force tracking and C-3 missions. The satellite operators in charge of commanding and monitoring the satellite's bus and payload systems as well as managing the network operating over the satellite are the control segment. Like the DSCS constellation that WGS will replace, spacecraft bus will be commanded by the 4th Space Operations Squadron of Shriver AFB, Colorado. Payload commanding and network control will be handled by the Army 53rd Signal Battalion headquartered at nearby Peterson AFB, Colorado with subordinate elements A Co. at Fort Detrick, Maryland, B Co. at Fort Meade, Maryland, E Co. at Fort Buckner, Okinawa, Japan, C Co. Landstuhl, Germany, and D Co. Wahiawa, Hawaii. The primary contractor for the satellites themselves is Boeing Satellite Development Center, which is building them around the Boeing 702 satellite platform. 
Originally five satellites were planned. On October 3, 2007, Australia's Department of Defence announced that the country would fund a sixth satellite in the constellation. Once in their orbits at an altitude of 22,300 miles km, each will weigh approximately 7,600 pounds 3, kg. The program intends to use both the Delta IV and the Atlas V as launch vehicles. The Air Force Space Command estimates each satellite will cost approximately US$300 million. The first three WGS satellites form Block I of the space segment. The next three, WGS satellites 4, 5, and 6, make up Block II. The next four, WGS 7, 8, 9, and 10, make up Block II follow on. Topic Launches Topic Block I The first launch WGS one was conducted by United Launch Alliance ULA on one October tenth, two thousand and seven. The satellite was carried by an Atlas V four hundred and twenty one lifting off from LC forty one at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station CCAFS. After launch, the WGS-1 satellite was given the U.S. military designation USA-195. Its coverage area stretches from the U.S. western coast to Southeast Asia. Launch of the second satellite WGS-2 was also conducted by ULA at 1:31 Coordinated Universal Time on April 4, 2009, using an Atlas V-421. A ULA Delta IV flying from LC-37B at CCAFS launched the third spacecraft on 6 December 2009. The WGS-2 satellite was positioned over the equator around 60 degrees east longitude over the Indian Ocean for use by U.S. Central Command in Afghanistan, Iraq and other parts of Southwest Asia. Originally, the second spacecraft was to fly on the Delta, and the third on the Atlas, but they were switched for an undisclosed reason. WGS-3 was launched on December 6, 2009, covers the eastern Atlantic Ocean. The satellite was launched by a Delta IV medium plus five, four, rocket originally Atlas V but switched with WGS-2, see above. <laughs> Block 2 WGS-4, the first of the Block II, was launched by United Launch Alliance from SLC-37B at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station by a Delta IV Medium Plus 5, 4, on January 20, 2012, 12.38 AM Coordinated Universal Time. WGS-5 was successfully launched by a Delta IV rocket flying in the Medium Plus 5, 4 configuration, with lift-off taking place from SLC-37B in Florida at 2027 local time on May 24, 2013. In May 2013, Boeing reported that the WGS-6 satellite had been shipped to Florida. WGS-6 was launched on a Delta IV rocket at 2029 Eastern Daylight Saving Time, 029 Greenwich Mean Time, on the 7th of August 2013 from Cape Canaveral Air Force Base. These satellites represent the Block II WGS satellites. Topic: <laughs> Block II follow-on. On August 23, 2010, Boeing was awarded an Air Force contract worth $182 million to begin work on the 7th WGS satellite. The new spacecraft was procured under the WGS Block II follow-on contract which included options for production of up to six WGS satellites. WGS-7 was successfully launched by a Delta IV rocket, with lift-off taking place from Complex 37 in Florida at 0007 GMT, 2007 local time, on 24 July 2015. WGS-8 was successfully launched by a Delta IV Medium Plus 5, 4 rocket on December 7, 2016 at 2353 GMT, 6.53 p.m. S from SLC-37B at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. 
The Delta IV's Delta Cryogenic second stage deployed the satellite as planned at 0035 GMT on December 8, 2016, December 7, 2016, 7:35 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. WGS-9 was launched on March 18, 2017. It was launched on a Delta IV launch vehicle. WGS-10 was launched atop a Delta IV rocket from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station on March 15, 2019. WGS-10 is the latest part of a constellation of highly capable communications satellites that serve the armed forces of the United States and its allies. It carries car band and X band transponders with 8.088 GHz of bandwidth, offering downlink speeds of up to 11 gigabits per second. WGS 11 is to be completed by Boeing by November 20, 2023, under a $605 million contract. See also Advanced Extremely High Frequency AEHF MILSTAR Defense Satellite Communication System DSCS <laughs>